Hello and welcome. My name's Ben Hales with Transform My Poker. Recently, Mr. Nick Welthall contacted me, asked me to do a short video on check raising. And this didn't come as a great surprise to me. Uh, I don't think Nick knows an awful lot about check raising, uh, given that my monthly salary's not gone up once. <laughs> Just kidding. Nick, of course, is a very generous man. So all joking aside, we are going to learn all the essential ingredients today behind check raising. Starting with what is a check raise, um, and it's fairly straightforward. You, you sat out of position post-flop, you could be on flop, turn or river, and you make a check. Wait for an opponent to bet, and then you come over the top with that lovely check raise move. It's a very strong move, and you can only do it when you are out of position on one of your opponents. Okay, so when should you be check raising? First of all, I would encourage you to always think about all of the cards that you could have at this stage and break them down into little sections and think about which of those hands are going to make good check raising hands usually you're going to want to combine some very very strong made hands like two pair or better and also some strong drawing hands perhaps a nut flush draw type of hand and so you've got some genuine hands some value hands and then some balancing drawing hands that are semi bluffing you should always be looking at pots that are going to become huge when you're check raising because that's what you're doing you're building a really big pot the check raise is a, a move that inevitably creates a big pot and therefore you want to be avoiding marginal one pair hands um, hands where you're generally going to win a small pot and you're not really looking to get involved in a massive pot because then you're going to tend to lose out Let's move on now and do an example. So in this example, we're sat in the big blind and we're playing deep stacked. We call a raise pre-flop and the flop comes down ace, seven, five. There's a flush draw there. And we're, we're looking at the range of cards that we would have called with pre-flop and thinking about which hands we're going to check raise. So if you remember, we talked about choosing value hands so strong hands um perhaps we've arrived here with ace seven suited ace five suited um perhaps we've got pocket fives pocket sevens um aces we probably would have three bet pre-flop so i'm not going to include those um and that they, they would make up our value hands for check raising here not many combinations depends a little bit on how often you would flat call with those suited aces. Um, but certainly we're gonna want to balance that off with a few semi-bluffing hands. And some good examples for those would be good quality flush draws and perhaps some straight draws. So this is what that might look like. So you've got your value hands there, sevens, fives, a seven, ace five, and, and of course seven, five as well. Um, and then we're balancing those combinations off with some semi bluffing hands what sort of ratio do you want between value and balance that's kind of up to you there are, there will be an optimal balance but it will depend on on a lot of circumstances um particularly your villains and how likely they are to fold so you, we're going to come on and talk a little bit about showdown equity fold equity on the next few slides but the most important thing for now is to realize that you do want some of both types of hands. You never want to always have a value hand or always have a, a bluffing hand. You want to have a balance and that's the crucial thing to learn here about check raising. Okay, so on the next few slides, I'm just gonna give you a few additional considerations when you're thinking about check raising. First up, and most importantly, think about your opponent or opponents. They're really, really important. I myself will fold too often to a check raise. And the reason I'll do it is because it's really dangerous to do the opposite. If you call too often against a check raiser, you can find yourself in big trouble. But there are a lot of villains out there who will fold too much. 
And that means you can check raise more often, put more bluffs into your range, and you're going to generate a lot of fold equity. This is a really powerful thing to do. I frequently check raise with wider ranges than most players because I'm targeting opponents who fold too much. The opposite is of course also true. If you've got opponents who are calling stations or they are good, loose, aggressive players who are going to continue in the pot and test you out, then you want to remove bluffs from your range and stick to value heavy check raise ranges. Very obvious points, but actually this is the crux of finding a good check raise range. The next thing I want you to consider is board texture. Two very simple statements. Dry boards tend to get more fold equity, wet boards tend to get less fold equity. This is very, very straightforward. When you've got a flop which is ace, seven, two with no flush draws, if you check raise on that board, you're gonna make people fold really, really often. You're just gonna auto profit. Um, wet boards, people tend to fold less frequently because they've genuinely got some piece of the action. They might have a draw, they might have a pair. So it's much more difficult to get rid of opponents on wet boards. So when you're building your check raising range, you should think about these two facts. The next thing I want you to think about is your villain again, but this time, how likely is he to bet if you check behind? And is it a disaster if it goes check, check? So if I'm holding a flush draw and I decide I want to check raise it, I check and the villain checks behind. I feel all right about that because, you know, I could just catch my card for free. I can play a smaller part. It's no big deal. Um, but if I'm holding, you know, a value hand like bottom two pair, I'm, I'm really not enjoying him checking behind. I feel like I'm, I'm losing value. I'm giving him the opportunity to catch up, giving a free card could be potentially quite dangerous. So there's two considerations here. First of all, we've got to think about how likely is my opponent to bet? This is a key part of the decision. If we're going to check raise, we need to be fairly confident that one of our opponents is going to make a bet. Otherwise, the check raise fails. Then the other consideration is, do we mind if the check raise fails? Do we mind if it goes check, check? Sometimes it's okay. We're, we're reasonably happy uh, to see the turn card. Um, and at other times, our hand needs some protection and we're losing value. So it's really not a good idea to risk check raising if you don't think it's going to come off. Okay. Um, next point is the, the other option. So instead of check raising, sometimes check calling is going to make more money. And it, it's often difficult to work out which is going to make more money. Think about your opponent's behavior. How likely is your opponent to fold? And then if you want him to fold, maybe you should do a bit more check raising. Whereas if you kind of want him to stick around, then potentially you might be able to make more money by slow playing your hand and just check calling. Of course, slow playing has its own drawbacks as well. And if you're in doubt, if you've got a value hand, I'd recommend going with the raise. Finally, I want to talk about stack to pot ratio. This is another consideration. When the flop comes down, if the stack to pot ratio is small, then you might not need to go check raising. You might be able to get all the chips into the middle with a much more passive approach, which may suit you. So instead of check raising the flop, you could check call and if it goes check check it's not the end of the world you can still find a way of getting all the money in the middle you're not losing value by taking a more passive approach so with SPRs that are small you might not even need to think about any check raising whatsoever the second point just asks the question of whether it might be smarter to check raise the turn and again, thinking about stack depth, how much is left behind, how are you going to get all your chips into the middle, especially if you're going for value, um, it's often a good spot on the turn to put the check raise in and then leave yourself a natural bet on the river. 
On the other hand, it's risky. If you check call flop, check turn, your opponent can check behind and you end up not getting as much value as if you uh, were to lead out. So there's a lot to think about, but try to understand the geometry of the hand and the pot size. So the final two points are low SPRs, there's less need to check raise your value hands and at high SPRs, you're going to tend to want to check raise more often just simply because if you don't, you're going to find it really hard to get lots and lots of chips into the middle. And if you're drawing to a nut hand or you already have a very, very strong hand, then they're the types of hands you're going to want to be check raising in deep stack spots uh, like in cash games. So there you go. You should now be well equipped to go out there, make some money with the check raise move. Good luck to you all. If you enjoyed the video, the information today, please give it a like, add some comments or questions below. We'd be really happy to hear from you. My name is Ben Hales with Transform My Poker. Thanks for listening.